Many of us feel somewhat out of control in our lives, that we're being blown this way and that by worldly conditions. The Buddha described this in terms of eight such worldly conditions, and we'll describe those eight coming right up. I'm Doug Smith of the Online Dharma Institute, that's onlinedharma.org. If you're new to this channel and interested in living a wiser and a kinder and a calmer life, consider subscribing to this channel. And click the bell down below if you want to receive notifications when I come out with new videos. So the whole idea in early Buddhism, in Buddhism in general, is that this world that surrounds us is known as samsara. This kind of cyclical kind of world that is always changing, that's wandering this way and that, that is always going to be affecting us in positive and negative ways, that is itself a kind of problem for us. And many of us indeed do feel out of control. We feel like we're being pulled by these kinds of outside forces. And these forces are indeed a, a specific, a, an integral part of life, an integral part of what is known as samsara. The Buddha discussed this in terms of what he called loka dhamma, or worldly conditions. Uh, we could also translate that as truths of the world, or worldly dharmas. That's the, the idea that, that he's getting across here. These are the, the truths of what it is to live a life in the world. And what he said about these is, these eight worldly conditions revolve around the world, and the world revolves around these eight worldly conditions. Now these eight conditions revolve around the world because they are objects of the world. They're integral to what the world is. And the world revolves around them because in our own lives, our lives, our worldly lives, depend upon our being pulled this way and that by these conditions. They really make our lives what they are. For many of us, they are our lives, really. And what the Buddha said elsewhere is that these eight worldly conditions should be completely understood, should be accurately understood. That's going to be the beginning of our way out of it, if you like. And so that's what we're going to try to do a little bit on this video, is to try to understand what, the, what these eight are. Now, they eventually became known as the eight worldly winds, and often, or at least in the past, I think at times I have mentioned the eight worldly winds on these videos. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where that metaphor of winds came from. Uh, we don't find that in the early texts. But the idea, I think, is, is very helpful, because they are kind of like winds that blow us this way and that, as though we are in a, in a ship, on a boat, on the, on the water, and being blown by these winds in various directions. Now, the first two of these are gain and loss. Gain and loss are extremely important, perhaps the most important for, for many of us. We strive hard to make money, to gain wealth. We may sacrifice large parts of our lives to that very end. We may sacrifice happiness, we may sacrifice a family, we may sacrifice friendships in order to spend time at work making the money that we, we believe that we need. Again, gain. And also, we may uh, stress out about loss, the potential for loss, about losing a job, about uh, losing uh, uh, money in the stock market, as happens from time to time. We may uh, stress out about uh, losing a house or a car, depending on what, what might have happened, uh, a fire or, or just simply not paying our mortgage or not paying our rent. There's many ways that we stress out about this, the way that this gain and loss can become the center of our lives, avoiding loss and striving for gain. The second two of these are fame and infamy, or fame and disgrace. We, many of us, spend our lives, if not looking for gain, then at least looking for fame. We may not want money, but at least we want to be famous. We want to be well-known. We want to be thought highly of. We want our face to be on the cover of magazines or on television or on the movies. Many of us spend, indeed, enormous amounts of time and effort in order to gain that kind of fame. We may uh, indeed, people go out to, to Hollywood or to New York or to various places in order to get their faces known. Uh, that's part of what uh, motivates a lot of people in their jobs. We want this uh, ability to be known by lots and lots of people, to be beloved of the masses, if you like. And to that end, some of us will indeed uh, try to pursue ethical ends because we want to be famous for good things. 
But that's not always the case. We certainly know of people who will lie, cheat, and steal in order to become famous. Not that they want to become famous for that, but simply lying may make you more easily famous than telling uh, perhaps a less interesting truth about yourself. Or, on the other hand, to avoid infamy, to avoid disgrace. Many of us will do what it takes. We'll, again, lie or cheat, steal in order to avoid the possibility of infamy. Now, sometimes infamy or disgrace is because of something that we actually do. And in that case, perhaps we have to face the consequences of our incorrect actions. This happens to all of us to some degree or another in our, in our lives. But there's also the possibility that we can be smeared by somebody uh, for nothing that we've done, for something that we're not responsible for. And that is the sort of thing, as much as anything, that many of us who are in the public eye will lose sleep over, perhaps. The possibility of somebody saying something nasty about us that even is not correct. And these are all kinds of things that stress us out, that can uh, overturn our lives, that can, again, affect our family, affect our happiness, affect our stress levels, things that can make us ill. So this is another, these are another of these worldly winds, if you like, the, these, these worldly conditions that keep the world moving. The third pair of these are praise and blame. And here, it's somewhat similar to the last one, uh, but praise and blame don't necessarily have to involve fame. In other words, we may not want to be famous, but at least we want to be, let's say, respected. We want to be praised. We want our good efforts to be praised by other people um, and not to be blamed for things, not to be criticized. I mean, I know for my own sake, I, I don't I don't care at all about fame. In fact, I sort of don't particularly look highly on fame. But I absolutely do admit to enjoying having people leave nice comments on my videos, which is, in a certain sense, a kind of a failing of mine. It's, it's being blown this way by this particular worldly wind, by this worldly condition of looking for praise. And similarly, uh, many of us will not like to be criticized. Uh, now, there are different kinds of criticism, we'll all know. There's constructive criticism, which we can really learn from. And there's destructive criticism, which is just simply harmful. Now, constructive criticism is something that I myself have had trouble with in my own past and that has hurt me. In other words, I have been constructively criticized sometimes about things that I've done and have been unable to take them to heart because I was simply too aversive to uh, blame, let's say. Uh, so blame can be useful to us, but most, for, for many of us in, at least, blame is something that we simply reject. We don't want to have any part of it. And, and as a result, we don't take correct blame to heart and make ourselves better from it. We may also simply avoid some course of action that might be beneficial to us in the possibility that we could be criticized for it. In other words, no matter what we do, there's going to be some criticism. And the, the more important and the bigger and... <clears throat> the more useful, perhaps, even the thing that we do, the more we're going to be open to criticism from various quarters. Some of them, again, being constructive, but many of them not being constructive. And we have to, if we're going to uh, st step out on a new career or a new project, we have to simply have the, the peace of mind, the centeredness, to be able to take that criticism well. Uh, and not simply to give up on new projects because we don't like criticism. Now, the fourth pair of these are pleasure and pain. And pleasure and pain, in some ways, are the most basic of these worldly conditions. We can look at all of the other ones in terms of essentially being varieties of pleasure and pain. But there is a more, we might say, specific sort of pleasure and pain we might be discussing here. It, let's say physical pleasures and physical pains. And many of us will know that we will pursue certain things because they are physically pleasurable, even if they might be detrimental to us. And another, on the other hand, avoid certain things because they are physically painful, even though they might be beneficial to us. So, for example, there are many people who will avoid going to doctors or dentists or getting vaccinated because they simply don't 
uh, find these things pleasurable, and they aren't pleasurable. Uh, th they involve some small amount of pain, or they won't get a, an operation that they may need, which is uh, the sort of thing that makes us scared. It's, it's painful. I've done videos in the past here about uh, skin cancer operations, minor ones, uh, basal cell carcinoma operations. I've had several of them, and they're not pleasant. Um, but, you know, if you don't have them, well, you have a potential to have a, a worse outcome in the future. So undergoing these kinds of limited pains can be in our interest. And on the other hand, we I think we know that... Uh, that certain kinds of people will pursue pleasures that are not good for them, uh, addictions of various kinds, uh, particularly addictions to certain kinds of, of uh, drugs that can give us that kind of hit of pleasure in the short term, but in the longer term can destroy our lives, can make us extremely unhappy, can destroy uh, families and friendships and uh, fritter away wealth and all the rest. So. This is another way that the, we are blown this way and that by these kinds of worldly conditions. Now, uh, now I've set out these eight worldly conditions, or I should say the Buddha has set them out. I'm, I'm simply discussing what he's saying. Uh, but the question is, what do we do about them? Now, uh, the Buddha also had something to say about that. And what I want to do is to uh, talk about it in, in one of the next videos here on this channel. And I'll, I'll put a link to that video up here on the screen when it's ready. Uh, thanks so much to all of you. If you're getting something out of these videos, please do consider checking out my Patreon page as well. I hope to see you over there. And meanwhile, be well.